uh, so, so as I said, like, you know, pretty related questions, I was just thinking that, it, you know, for something to be truly sort of cloud native and also um, build upon that event driven systems, how can we or how are we thinking of um, dealing with maybe transient failures or just like simple network failures and sending requests for Jenkins as a source, but also for Jenkins as a sync, how can we implement an architecture which can persist events and, uh, and also create a way for any source which is sending events to Jenkins sync to really have that architecture where events are not being lost and every time there is something which is capturing the events and dealing with um, whatever action needs to be taken at maybe like an asynchronous time because I keep going back to um, that one thing you said and that was really that really resonated in terms of the architecture was loosely coupling um, and if we basically like design a system where it's sort of like an RPC call between Jenkins as a source and whatever sync and Jenkins as a sync and whatever source. And it's very like dependent and it's very tightly coupled with another service being available, especially for Jenkins as a sync or, or I mean a Jenkins as a source, we really want that other service to be available when we're sending to do something or maybe when we're talking about Jenkins as a sync, we really want the sync to be available whenever another source is sending and I think its implementation for Jenkins as a sync is way more important than Jenkins as a source because, you know, someone really might depend on taking an action inside of Jenkins whenever a cloud event is triggered in that particular source. So just been thinking about that. Um, there is actually a plugin which is it's, it's um, cloud wait, pop sub like pop sub light plugin. Uh, for Jenkins, and it's I'm not really sure if a public subscribe pattern might work here, having something like a, a simple queuing system might work, or if we if we even want to, you know, go that route for now. Uh, maybe just like to hear what your thoughts on that are, if you have suggestions. I mean, I, I always thought of, it's interesting this idea of sync and source because I came into the project when I first thought about it was in terms of PubSub. So exactly that. But I think there's probably different ways to think about how how events, how they're kept, how you, how much, uh, how, how can I say this? How much you guarantee the ordering of them in many ways and and then how long you persist them for and i think that's a whole series of i think there are a couple of different ways of doing it but i think pub publish subscribe is would be certainly a good way to start um yeah yeah um, i think those are very um important uh, things to consider and also when we are talking about just having a publish subscribe pattern for Jenkins as a sync, it will basically, I like what in, in my head I'm thinking what it might look like is, you know, someone is creating uh, a user who wants to use Jenkins as a sync is creating a topic inside of, inside of that Jenkins, that, that bus. Um, which is going to be different from the, the Jenkins as a sync implementation or the Jenkins as a sync configuration. Because I don't really think that putting the bus alongside or like the bus or the or just the topic configuration with the actual plugin, if that really makes sense. It has to go, I mean, it should come with the plugin, but just the configuration of creating topics, which our sync will subscribe to and the publisher will send messages to uh, how how do you think that can look like i think there's a couple ways to approach it i literally have <laughs> this data intensive applications open like hmm, let's see let's see there's a quick idea that helps me with this no i i think there's like a, a number of ways in which you can deal with how you process streams how you store streams like 
how streams are transported, like how are you directly message brokers, event logs, and then how you process them afterwards. Like there's so many different ways to approach this that, yeah, it, it is kind of like a really an open question because you want to leave it, like, is that going to be something that's left that we want to leave configurable for an end user? Is that something that we decide? I guess if it's just Jenkins, it's something that we do need to decide on and it should make sense for a CI CD pipeline. But is that something that should be decided more at the level of like the event seg? Like I really, I really don't know. What have you what have you been reading? Just out of curiosity. Um, well, I so all of the the usually the pops up patterns of the design for any um, uh, event sort of mediator or just a middleware any any service whether it's from Azure or whether it's even uh, a simple thing like a Kafka implementing something like that is is that usually needing a topic to be configured um, and and you know we cannot i mean there should be a way that will be open for the users to mention whatever topic it's going to be that jenkins um, as a sync will subscribe to but also have have a way of persistence in that bus itself where all of the events are coming in so uh, actually the knative broker i shared this with uh, with Hub when we talk class in our meeting let me see if I can do this. Uh, maybe send it over in this, in like in our channel or Slack. Okay. So Knative Broker or just Knative Eventing in general is also very interesting because they have this live system where all of the events are coming in and then they have triggers, which, which is essentially maybe you know like like a topic or something that is open for the user to configure that how what do they want to do with this with this type of event uh but there is so that, that you know middle middleware which is sitting in between receiving all of those topics and then based on maybe the filters or based on the topic or just based on here for knative eventing they have they have triggers um <clears throat> Which is which they say that it, it it represents a desire to subscribe to events from a specific broker. So for them, trigger is something which is sort of like sitting at that level between broker and the actual whatever is going to be working with the actual event. So they're filtering based on the, the they have different brokers maybe configured with um, you know different sort of maybe metadata or whatever. A broker name, a broker type. Um, I think it's usually broker name. Yeah, it is broker name. <clears throat> so this is super. So wait, can I ask you a question? <laughs> this is super interesting with the triggers because it doesn't just go from brokers to subscribers. The broker emits triggers, mm -hmm. that, and then that's what the subscribers subscribe to. So, so how are these triggers? How are these triggers created? That's so, so what, so it's basically like the trigger is sort of sitting at that broker and it's, um, so when we have that trigger, it's basically saying that I want to receive event from this particular broker, which is, so there is a default broker and I think they call it default. So there is a default broker and then there's a broker that, uh, that someone can create and you only maybe as a publisher only send events to that broker, say, let's call it Knative um trigger or no, no no let me find a better name <laughs> so let's say it's like a pipeline tecton pipeline run broker and i'm sending my events to this broker um and then as a trigger i've said that as soon as this broker receives any event i want to i want to subscribe to to that so that's actually creating a trigger it's like subscribing to event from a particular broker and then you know, as as I have subscribed, I want to I want to maybe like take whatever action I do. I'm not I'm not really sure how they are taking actions, but their whole like broker and trigger pattern of a trigger actually sort of not being a trigger for an event, but being a trigger for for um, that that subscriber or that broker is so is so so is the trigger so there's the broker, which is, I guess, 
like some sort of message queue, message bus, and then the trigger is the logic. Is that right? Is the logic is the logic of what you do with the different events or what can be done? Like it's telling to the subscribers, like it has more knowledge, more control, more sense of. I don't know, I, I guess more sense of context in many ways, like this thing happened, it's not, I'm not just giving information, I'm, this contains more data on what you may want to do with that information, is that, is that right, or is it not as knowledgeable the context as I'm thinking right there? Uh, yeah, that's what, like, that's what I uh, understand of, like, triggers, just saying that, okay, I do want to, when, when an event is coming into a particular broker with a particular name. Um, I am. Uh, I, I'll send this to a subscriber. But there's there. So there's filtering inside of triggers. So you can you can like filter with different um, triggers. But I wouldn't really say that the 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 trigger itself has a lot of information. But it does have information for, like let's say the. I'm actually looking at, I'll send, I'll also send this. Sending um, one of the, they're, they're like filtering and how they're doing it. So, so they have like the broker and then they have filters inside of that broker, which will create that, like that context or that knowledge that you were talking about. So, you know, even when you have a broker which is subscribing to a particular, or which is basically sitting between that publish and subscriber of two different kinds, and like publisher says that, you know, I have all of these events, all of which will go to broker A, even inside of that broker, you will have um, like trigger scan filter based on it. here they have attributes so we can also have attributes of you know the C type should be so and so the um, C source should be so and so if that makes sense yeah thank you that actually does clarify it a lot thank you <laughs> I don't know if that helps you though <laughs> Um, but yeah. I think this is a really interesting pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just thinking that if we are creating that tight coupling between, you know, Jenkins as a sync and any any subs, any sort of publisher, you know, whatever that source is, it's it's very tightly coupled. Then the whole idea of communication being asynchronous or um, being you know, failure resistant is sort of like the whole idea is it, it, it's just loses the whole thing. So I'm not again, I'm not really sure because they're not just, you know, there's within pop, pops up patterns too. there. As you said, there's so many um, ways we can implement this. And the only one uh, thing that I did look into was the the pops up like plugin inside of Jenkins. Um, which is like a pop sub, <laughs> a lightweight publish subscribe pattern for Jenkins, but it is still is pretty interesting. So uh, it, it's like I was just thinking about what way can we use and how can the configuration look like because you know even the Knative event thing, it's using that pop sub pattern, but how they're creating that topic and creating filters on it is very interesting. Um, we, I feel like this will, this is going to probably go beyond just, um, you know, the end of GSOC and also talk uh, for, for like creating the best architecture possible for event driven systems and asynchronous event driven systems, creating all these patterns. Um, I think they take a lot of thought and reiteration. So. I'm actually excited to have this conversation and then like have these conversations in the future, whatever we might end up developing. Yeah, I totally agree. I think this has got, you know, the GSAC project project is amazing and your work is fantastic, but I think there will definitely be more to work on beyond GSAC and you you will be a great person to do it. And I do think it has all these like really interesting questions on architecture and how you make a good event driven system that are, are 
sort of questions the industry as a whole are, is grappling with and continually evolving and it's right in the heart of that so yeah it is it is really interesting conversations to have and there's a lot there it's very cool yeah, in fact, um, a lot, I think, I would say 60% of my, um, the, the, the GSOC proposal is just <laughs> proposing different ideas for um, designing this event sync because that more than the event source, because event source sort of sounds um, pretty straightforward, except, you know, trying for transient failures. But talking about Jenkins as a sync, there's just so much that we need to um, keep in mind. Well, you know, we have the event parsing, the metadata or the body parsing, and then creating filters and creating a whole architecture. So um, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to the, the whole Jenkins as a sink and, and everything related to it. <laughs> and in terms of those questions around Jenkins as a sink and broader architectural considerations, are you having, enough I guess support and put like I know you're meeting with above a couple times a week are you are you is there anything more that you need are you going to different are you going to the event SIG are, are you meeting with other people like I think I think these questions are really interesting we can certainly try and broaden the net of input you have does that make sense mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um yeah, I, I um, have not really been able to connect with like the right people who would have a lot of um, sort of idea on this regarding the event architecture. I do think that the, the event SIG um, is the most um, relevant for these type of questions. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, it's, it'll be my first time today going to the meeting and hearing from them. But I hope that that can be a place where I can um, raise questions around this and also have a communication. Um, and and yes, like have like talking with you guys and um, it is it it sort of gives an idea to to be sort of steered in the right direction of researching because right now it's just like looking at a bunch of different things. Um, so so I yes and no yes because uh, you know there are like all of the members in the community uh, are very helpful and they're also like guiding for for this particular sort of architecture but no because I yet do not really have like been able to connect with or like I did not actually ask these questions a lot before is just starting to come around for Jenkins as a sink. So I'm hoping once everyone is on the call and also through the SIG event um, or the event SIG uh, meetups or meetings can get answers to it and have communications about it. Yeah, I think so. And the event SIG is a good place to start. And Mauricio is, I believe, in his new his new job, he's working on K-Native. So I'm like, hmm, <laughs> we might, I mean, I realize he's, he's new, he's settling in and that's always such a, you know, there's always so much to do there. But um, I think between kind of pulling on more connections that we all might have and then also the event saying, I think that we'll, we could get, you know, you speaking to more people and it would be interesting for you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, now I want to go to the event SIG too. <laughs> I had so many other things to do, but I'm like, oh, I really want to go. Um, yeah. Good. Um, yeah, well, those were the only um, top questions I had, uh, burning questions. <laughs> um, there's I'm pretty sort of set. The, the first thing, obviously, is just doing or moving um, the UI from mobile config to having its own page. And so I think this week is going to be doing that and also just researching different um, methodologies of implementing um, things, but but in a more async communication kind of um, thing. So I have been looking at a lot of them and they all have such different architecture. I get so confused, <laughs> but, um, but there is, should be, and I'm basically like, writing down um, the all different architectures and what can work and what cannot. 
Uh, so hopefully it should be good for this week. And I am meeting with the ball leader and maybe I'll be able to schedule something with Mauricio and talk more with these things. But that was that was it for me today. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, in which case, since you have more meetings in the week, we can give you the next half an hour back. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll um, stop our recording. And then...